seized out a man that night after a daring prison escape. The men broke out of a maximum security prison in Dannemora, New York. Where a manhunt is underway for two inmates and police say escaped. Four inmates who escaped in Oklahoma. Prisoners are used to escape. Tonight, authorities telling this community to remain vigilant, calling those escapees dangerous. <laughs> Investigators believe this escape was planned. The three inmates escaped from the Orangeburg County Detention Center Saturday night. o'clock was more excited than you guys are. Hey, I'm not Troy. I get that. I'm not six foot four. I'm not as good looking. I weigh less, okay? So I'll throw that out there. I'm not Tyler. I'm not Carson. My name is Tyler Sturban. I'm excited to be here. If you guys will, real quick, before we get started, how cool is it that we have a pastor that gets paid to travel and speak places? And we get to hear that for free. Every single weekend, we get to hear that for free. But I miss him. Will y'all get on Instagram real quick? Go to his last post. We just comment, I miss you, Pastor. I love you, Pastor. Or uh, I saw somebody in the last service say, hey, miss you, Pastor, because this dude ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> I'm not talking about nothing today. Nobody's going to be, like, worried today. I'm not talking about nothing. But comment, comment, just say, I miss you, Pastor. Love you, Pastor. My name's Tyler. I'm excited to be here. I have a wife. Her name's Ryan. Like the boy, she's not a boy. Now, why I say that is what was it, 2016, 2015, 2016, when Congress pushed that anybody can marry anybody and all that? Okay. You don't think that's going to hit your house until you're married to a woman named Ryan. I'm changing my insurance one day over, and uh, I hop on the phone. They say, hey, what's your spouse's name to put on the thing? I say, Ryan. I hear a silence. <laughs> and then this young lady proceeds to say, oh, my gosh. Are you so excited? You excited about the new law that got passed? So I have a wife, her name's Ryan, like the boy. She's not a boy. I have a daughter, her name's Salem. She's five years old, and I have a daughter, Asher, who's two. So it's all girls. All I do is think pink. And we're from Nashville, Tennessee, okay? And I get it, I get it. Florida people make fun of everybody else. Howdy, Tyler. Yeehaw, Tyler. I don't think Florida people know how crazy Florida people are. <laughs> Y'all don't. Y'all don't at all. Y'all have the, your own ecosystem. So I'll, I'll break this down for you, how it hits, affects someone from Nashville, Tennessee. In Nashville, we have bunny rabbits. We have squirrels. And we have the occasional deer. Man, it's a quaint evening when you see a deer run across. You guys, I don't know why anyone in Florida has pets. Just walk outside. You have every animal in the animal kingdom in your backyard, and you think that they're cute. I don't know how y'all live here around dragons, okay? Because where I'm from, we read a history book, we see mythological creatures, fairy tales, and y'all say, hey, don't bother them. They're just sunbathing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's a dragon. You guys think that you're inconveniencing the dragon. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean you were somebody. I'm going to get out of your way, boo. To a dragon. But here's how it happens. I'm walking uh, with my daughter, Salem in one hand, Asher in the other hand. And we're walking down just like a, like a sidewalk or something. We're walking, and I guess we startled a dragon. I'm sorry that I startled you, dragon. It takes off running. My wife's with me. Takes off running. So how I am, uh, and, and for anybody else, I'm 100% Caucasian. Not like y'all who are one quarter Puerto Rican. Everybody's something, right? No, I am Caucasian. 
Now, what Caucasians get a bad rap for is we're interested. Oh, there's a noise in the bush. Let me go check that out. Let me just slide through. Not this one. I'm not the one. Okay? So when a dragon gets startled, Tyler gets startled. I'm not trained in how to fight dragons, y'all. So I take my daughter's hand when it runs, both of them, and the only thing I know how to do is I throw their hands towards the dragon and I run. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Y'all call them iguanas. We don't play that. I had never seen an iguana before. We don't play that. So my, my, my wife looks at me. I'm starting a small group called the Bad Dads Club. You guys can join. I'm cool with that. My wife goes, who do you think you are sacrificing your daughters? I said, that's what they did in the fairy tale. They would sacrifice people to dragons. But isn't that, isn't that how it goes, though? Man, I became a dad. I became a dad. But I still got non-dad tendencies, and someone's going to remind me. I get married, right? We've been married for six years. Blissful years, right, babe? But hey, someone's going to remind me. Remember that thing you did when you were single? And you start feeling a little guilty, right? Or man, maybe you just started coming to church. Trying to get your church on. Trying to be a Christian. Coming to Easter to take pics. But someone's going to remind you. Shame. Guilt. We're in a series called Escape. How do you escape that feeling of guilt? Not only the enemy. The enemy will tell you, hey, remember what you did in your past. But what about, we called them frenemies growing up. I don't know if you know what frenemies are. Acquaintances is a nice word for it. What about that coworker that just wants to remind you of that business party that you got a little too tipsy yet? You're at church, right? It's real. Your family member, right? You're on your second marriage. Oh, is this one going to end up like the first one? It's real. Because the church does a really good job of telling you, man, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus now, y'all, right? People start jumping. People get excited. There's a plan for your future. It's not to harm you, but to give you a plan and a purpose and move you, right? But what happens when I'm going to my plan, I'm going to my purpose, but I'm dragging this guilt? Because this doesn't go away. Guilt is one of the weird things that it lasts as long as you allow it to last, right? You heal. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have a scar. But it's, you don't hurt anymore. Guilt, as long as you want it to hurt. But Tyler's not talking about anything, like I said. If you will, turn to Mark 5. Man, it's so, it's so easy to feel guilty. So easy to listen to people. But like I said, man, Tyler's not talking about anything. Mark 5, verse 24. Y'all ready? I think we got it on the screen if you want to play karaoke, but I brought a Bible. Verse 24. Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding around him. 25. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. Verse 26, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Verse 27, she had heard about Jesus. Can I read that again, y'all? She had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. Verse 28, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. 29, immediately. The bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Can we stop right there? Uh, we're not talking about this today, but we, we skip over miracles every single time we read the Bible. We just move on to the next sentence like it was nothing. Jesus can do that same thing right now, but you want to get to the next sentence super fast. But I'm not talking about anything. Verse 30, Jesus realized at once that the healing power had gone out from him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? Mm, this is a side note. This is free. This isn't in the notes either. But he kept on looking. Aren't you excited that Jesus kept on looking for you? Maybe you didn't hear me. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't look up once and say, okay, there, he's not in church. I'm turning my head down. No, he kept looking until you showed up. But, and, and the people, the Christians said, don't worry about it. You won't find the person. He said, no, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep looking, but Tyler's not talking about anything. Verse 32, but he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, verse 34, daughter, your faith has made you well. 
Go in peace. Your suffering is over. How good is that? Verse 25. If you're like me, I read a paragraph and I forget what I read when I get to the bottom. So I feel like I have to read the Bible. Uh, I feel like I've read the Bible a million times because I go get to the end of a chapter. I'm like, dang, I didn't remember none of that. Verse 25. Let's just start at the top. A woman in the crowd. This, this girl didn't look good. She didn't dress good. She was just a normal woman. Nothing about her. But you know the interesting thing about crowds are? If you don't know where you're going, they'll tell you where they're going. You'll end up where they're going, whether you want to be going there or not. So you guys, like I said, Florida people are crazy, right? You'll see the news article, Florida man bites leg off. Unnecessary. But that's what you get when you're raised around dragons. So I don't think anything different. But y'all, y'all call, uh, y'all have cities, but y'all call them malls, okay? Metropolises. Never used that word before until today, talking about y'all's malls. What's it called? Uh, grass. Sawgrass. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. We're talking about this today. That's unnecessary. Here's what happens. My, my wife and I, <laughs> we just wanted a quaint afternoon <laughs> just to walk around. Someone said, go to Sawgrass Mall, it's super fun. Okay, I'll take my, my wife there. We'll hang out, it'll be fun, they said. Go to Sawgrass, they said. You won't pull your hamstring, they said. We get to Sawgrass, we walk in this, or this entrance, and it's big. But that, I, we went to the mall, but then it said, go to mall number two. <laughs> okay, I'll go down two. Then it said, go to mall number three. And then four, I got to 76. I said, okay, we got to leave. So we didn't know where we were. So, so I asked Ryan, I said, hey, what if we just followed wherever, because everyone has luggage. And so for some reason, everybody's got luggage. And that, hey, there's something too. The crowd, the crowd that you follow has got luggage and you better be ready to hold on to that luggage when you join that crowd. That side, Tyler's not talking about anything today. I told you. So I said, let's follow them. They know where the main exit is. Because I'm sure we came in the main entrance. So we start following these people. We get outside, and it is a barren wasteland. Not one car. One, you guys have targets in your malls. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how that goes. So we get out, and so how... Uh, Ryan and I in Nashville, how malls work is like, if you go outside, just walk around the food court and you'll get, probably get to where you're at. So I said, okay, let's just start walking around and we'll see uh, where our car is. We start walking. And we keep walking. Guys, we walk some more. I'm so mad I didn't have my Fitbit on at the time, didn't even get to clock any of the steps. I said, Ryan, because I, I got scared, okay? It's hot, asphalt there, I'm walking. I turn into Tom Hanks from Castaway. I take my shirt off, I tie it around my head. I said, this is where it ends. I'm ready to go down in this parking lot. <laughs> and so we go in the entrance, like the next entrance. I'm like, okay, maybe we're closer. Literally, no joke, and I'm not even kidding. We didn't walk in the mall. We walked all the way around. We maybe did like, a quarter of a mile in the mall. We went, I could see where we went out the exit. But the crowd will take you places where they are needing to go, not where you're needing to go. And you have got to realize when you're allowing yourself to hear this guilt, to hear this shame, and follow that, you're going to go where they want to go. They're taking their baggage and they're moving on. But like I said, Tyler's not talking about anything. Let's keep moving. It says a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years years. 12 years is a minute, y'all. Actually, how, where I'm from, a minute. That's a ghetto minute. That's a long time. A minute. How long were you there? A minute. That's a minute. 12 years? I'm not broke all the time. I'm only broke on the 13th and the 14th and like the 3rd and the 4th, right? I get money sometimes and then I pay everybody. I'm not broke 24-7 or my wife and I aren't fighting 24-7. This girl suffered for 12 years. That's no longer an issue because the church, the church has a real thing. Hey, hey, pray for me. I'm going through a season right now. That's not a season. That, 
That's a suffrage. That is not a season. Hey, you pray for me. I, I, I'm just going through a hard season right now. When will it be done? Ah, oh, a month or two. Just let, let the money get right. This is 12 years. And then it says what she's going through. And it says she had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. Not periodic bleeding. Constant bleeding. This was no longer an issue. This was an identity that she lived with. When something's constant, your family sees it all the time. What you're going through, your family sees it all the time. It becomes an identity for you. Maybe you've been constantly bleeding. But, but like I said, guilt is one of the things that doesn't go away until you allow it to go away. No one makes you mad. No one makes you angry. No one makes you sad. No one makes you sad. You choose. And no one makes you guilty. You choose to be guilty. You choose to feel ashamed. And this lady, for 12 years, had constant bleeding. I think the church is really good. I'm going to say church. I think Tyler. I'm going to just put Tyler. So you guys can make fun of him. Tyler is really good at asking for forgiveness the first time. I can do that. God, hey, sorry I messed up. My bad. I'm sorry. I drank too much. My bad. I'm going to get right. The next weekend, when you have to say that prayer again, you start feeling guilty, right? How many times do I ask God for forgiveness? How many times do I got to ask for this? How many times am I going to bleed? It says this lady constantly bled. Uh, like I said, I'm part of a, a group called Bad Dads Club. And I'm in a season right now of uh, potty training, okay? So in my ignorance, I believe that when they got potty trained during the day, they were potty trained at night. Where were you at when I needed you? You laugh now, right? It's easy to laugh now. So my daughters are doing good, man. During the day, they're perfect. And my five-year-old is like once, once a week, once every 10 days. So, man, she's getting it, right? But how, why? So it's, it's got to be hard that she knows that she's done wrong. Daddy says, hey, we're not going to have any accidents. Uh, you get in trouble. But hey, let me clean you up. Let me mess with this. Do you know how shameful they probably feel when they wake up in the morning? They know they have to get in trouble, but guess what? They can't clean themselves. They can't. So who do they have to go to? Dad. Daddy. You think that's not shameful? It's my two-year-old every single morning, it almost seems like. Daddy, will you help me? But we get more shameful. We feel more guilty. We allow this religion or whoever it is speaking into your life to, to dictate how you feel and why can't ask God for forgiveness again. I just got through that. I can't do it again. But what happens when it's constant, y'all? What happens when guilt is always there? What happens when you're so shameful and it's always there? Maybe something from 12 years ago and you've dragged it here. So it gives you the picture of this lady, what she's going through, how long she's going through, but it keeps moving. Verse 26, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors. She knew she was broken. She went to who she thought could fix it. How often do I do that? Okay, I'm lonely. Let me get a new friend. I need, a, I need more resources. I need more income. Let me get a new job. Right, the first marriage didn't work out. I'm kind of feeling depressed. I'm kind of, let me get a new one. My kid, same thing. Over and over and over again, you begin to try to fix things. And when you try to fix things, does it work out? No, never does. Because then as we keep moving, it says she, uh, she has suffered a great deal from many doctors. And side note, you don't go to a doctor to suffer. You don't go to a doctor to suffer, meaning the people that she went to were causing her more harm than good. It says, and over the years, she spent everything she had to pay them. It will cost you everything to try to be like Jesus. It will cost you everything, mentally, emotionally, physically. Trying to remember who you lied to, costs you everything. Mentally, trying to figure out why your kid's going crazy right now and doing the things that are, why didn't I love them right? Was it that one time that I yelled at them too hard or I spanked them too hard? Or... You will spend everything you have when you try to fix things yourself. 
Because if it wasn't bad enough 12 years ago, when she's bleeding, now she's bleeding and broke. Tyler, I thought it was bad back then, but now look at me. Now I'm depressed about it. It was just the issue, now I'm depressed. It will hurt you. And then as it, very, as, as it closes, it says it's, she spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. So my wife, for some reason, we've been married uh, for six years, but we've known each other, like I said before, for a minute, okay? We've known each other for a minute now. She knows Tyler can't work with his hands. She knows that. But for some reason, she still asks me when something's not working to go fix something with these hands. Now, now, ladies in the house, I don't know how your husband works. I don't know how this goes. But do they deal with an issue of, hold on, what do you call it? Pride? Arrogance? Because if you ask me to fix something, I'm not going to say, no, I have no clue how to do that. You may want to hire somebody. No, what do I do? Here, I'll, I'll actually show you what I do. So she, she not, written not too long ago, hey, the car's kind of driving where we go out and check it out. I was waiting for this. So here's what you do. Okay, you pull your pants up. Hey, will you give me some paper towels? Like I know what I'm about to do with these paper towels. But I asked for them. I snatched these up. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go out here. Don't worry about it, babe. I got this. Pop the hood. I'm good. Right now, at this point, Tyler knows what he's doing. I open it up. The first place I go, and this is just me. This may not be any other uh, gentleman in here. I go for the oil stick. I know that where the oil in that little line, like, you know, the little lines is. I know it's got to be there. As soon as I do, I pull it out. Act like I know what I'm looking at. But then I remember, oh, I got to wipe it off and then dip it back in again to get the real check of the oil. Your boy's doing good, right? I check it, then I'm like, all right, on to the next thing. <sighs> Ooh, is that the antifreeze tank? That's got a line on it. And what do they say in the, uh, you know, in the, in the car world? Let's top it off. That's easy enough. Now I'm lost. That's it. That's all I got. Then I start cleaning things unnecessarily. When you don't know what to do, you start cleaning things for no reason. Have no, let me get this oil off of this. Let me get this grease off of this. Thinking that's going to change the thing. And by the end of my reign of terror on this car, the car is worse than when I found it. When you try to fix things, you will make it worse than it was. You will. It says that she went to doctors. She went to people she knew. You can fix it. I'm going to go to you. And it got worse. It got no better. How many times do we do that? How many times does Tyler do that? Because I'm broken. I'm hurting. But I got this thing called pride. I got this thing called arrogance. This ego. That I got I to gotta fix it. I got it. But I'm not talking about anything. Let's keep moving. Verse 27, she had heard about Jesus. So that's when the organ hits. Okay, that's it again. She had heard about Jesus. Then some people start getting up like this. She had heard about Jesus. People start clapping and maybe you'll see one person doing a lap. And then I said, she had heard about him. And then everyone says, because that's all it takes. That's all it takes. And this side note, this is free. A lot of times we don't invite to Easter because of guilt. Well, I can't invite my family. You, you, you'll invite a stranger because why? They don't know you. You invite that cousin that at the family reunion, you know they're going to bring up what you said. So let me, not, let me not do that. So you're willing to let somebody bleed constantly because you're scared they're going to make you feel guilty? Come on, y'all. Oh, Tyler does it. Me, never mind. Tyler does that. She had heard about, one more time. Whew, that's all it takes. So here's what she did. Oh, man. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd. Remember, the crowd will take you wherever you want to go. But Tyler has a rule. Maybe you're not like me. Y'all rock with me for a second. It says that she had heard about Jesus, so she came through the crowd and got behind Jesus. So let me try to find somewhere real quick. Tyler has a rule. My wife knows this. If we go somewhere, church, uh, a ball game, I, I can only sit 
in this seat or this seat? Here's why. If Tyler has to use the restroom, if I need to get up, I really feel uncomfortable when I have to squeeze by people. But here, let, let me get, where am I? Yeah, let, let me get right there. Where's that, where's that bag? Right there. Come on, come on, come on. Let me hang out with you. Can I hang out with you? Okay, so here's, here's this lady. Listen to this. She came through the crowd. So she sit, she's with this crowd, and then all of a sudden, and if you're like me, I have to use the bathroom. I look at you. But you're looking at Troy. Oh, man, he's pretty, he's pretty into this one. Let me look my other side. Oh, man, she's in it too. So then I sit back, bladder about to burst, about to die. I'm not paying attention, but I'm glad they are. Why do we allow other people's experiences to be more important than our own? I'm killing myself over here for you. Now, hey, I'm not, you, you're probably a great guy. But here's what this lady said. You're not going to touch Jesus. You must not bleed like I bleed. Let me get up real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Excuse me. Sorry if I got blood on you. Hey, you must not bleed. Or, now, you're not going to touch Jesus. I heard. I heard about Jesus. You're not going to touch him? Why aren't you? Y'all are crazy. Let me move on. Let me get moving real quick. You must not bleed like I bleed, sir. Hold on. Excuse me. I don't care what you say about me. But then that, that's what he said. Why are they moving? All righty. You guys are looking. Why is this guy crazy? But you must not bleed. Y'all must not bleed like I bleed. She saw Jesus. She had heard about Jesus, and she said, y'all must not bleed like I bleed. Y'all don't know what 12 years did to me. You don't know the guilt that I brought. You don't know the shame that I brought. You don't know what my family says about me. But you must not bleed like I bleed. But that's my story, guys. I'm no better than you. On August 6, 2010, it was my first day of senior year. I have my best friend, Damon Maurice Dunn, in the front seat, and I have my little brother, Zachary Scott Sturban, in the back seat. And as we're driving on the way home from school, we had a basketball game after that, uh, there's a patch of gravel on the side of this one-lane highway. And I hit the patch of gravel, and in a, in a, in a, a last-ditch effort, I go to correct myself, and I overcorrected, and I went head-on into a, another lady. Three days later, whenever I woke up, I found out that my best friend, Damon Maurice Dunn, died on impact. Then the next day, they kept saying, your little brother's going to get better, Tyler. And then the next day, I'd wake up, your little brother's going to get better, Tyler. And then the next day, your little brother's going to get better, Tyler. Until seven days later, they told me that your brother didn't make it. Maybe you don't bleed like I bleed. <laughs> maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe the voices are loud enough for you. They're not for me. Maybe you don't bleed like I bleed. So then as I'm in the hospital room, a preacher man comes up and he says, you should, be, you should be preaching. You should tell your story. I said, me? Nah, man, I, didn't, I don't have family that works in church. I don't really, I've never been a part of a church like that. Now you should tell your story. You know what? There is a kid in the hospital bed that was just stupid enough to believe him. Right? So Tyler starts preaching. But then right when I start stepping into that calling that I had on my life that someone told me about is right when someone goes, you? I got the pictures of that party you did last year. You want me to show everybody? Let me hop on Twitter. Let me hop on Instagram. Let me hop on Facebook and tell everybody. So that same person that was just stupid enough to believe the person who started preaching was the same person that was just stupid enough to believe them and stop. Can't do it. Maybe you're right. I'm not a pastor's kid. I don't, my dad was never in church like that. Let me pull back. And then finally that, that same preacher man walks up to me. After I wasn't, he said, you gonna preach again? The same kid that was stupid enough to believe him the first time. That was stupid enough to believe the people in the crowd. And he was stupid enough to believe him again. And I walked in that. Maybe you don't bleed like I bleed. Maybe it hasn't been constant for you, but I think maybe it has. As it closes, the, the woman said, Tyler, how though? I get it, you're telling me, and, and you're hyping this up, and I get it. I understand. That's really nice. But what do I do? Right now, what do I do? Help me, Tyler. In verse 33. 
Then the frightened woman, so she touches Jesus' robe, she becomes healed. Verse 33. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, are we here, are we here, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. When was the last time you fell on your knees like for real? Not just because you needed a financial breakthrough and you needed a million dollar check to hit your bank account. No, I'm saying, when was the last time you looked back at what Jesus has done, you fell on your knees and you begin to tell him everything? Worship is the avenue to renew or to get guilt out of your life. Worship is that and confession. Repentance. Because if, th- if, if, if I'm reading the book, if I'm reading the Bible, and it says that the, the woman told him everything, I think of my wife when something crazy happens. Here's what she does. Tell her, you'll never believe what happened when we went to the mall, and then we did this, and then we did this, and then we did this, and then we got here, and then we did this, and we did this. My wife tells me everything. I can only imagine that the woman that had the issue with blood started saying, so 12 years ago, when I started bleeding, all of this went down, and then this happened, and then now I'm here, and I saw the crowd, and I started moving through, and people started talking. My family said I was stupid for coming here. I didn't. I think I was stupid for coming here, but then I grabbed your rope. I'm so sorry for grabbing your rope. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry. You're a teacher. You're a prophet. I get it. But I touched it, and all of a sudden, I felt healed. And when was the last time you worshiped or told Jesus everything? When? Will you guys stand up with me? Will you guys stand up with me? I want to give you this opportunity. It's nothing crazy. I'm not asking you to do anything crazy. Unless God asks you to do something crazy, then Tyler doesn't exist. But I get it. I know how this goes. I know how this works. If I start raising my hands, or if I go on my knees, or if I go up front just to respond, my wife will think something's going on in my head, and I can't really move like that because she'll think I'm talking to someone else. I'm a pastor. Here's what happens. Uh, pastor Troy preaches. All the pastors are hanging out, and they say, Tyler wants to uh, respond. Man, I just need God to heal my brokenness. But then I start thinking, oh, wait. None of the other pastors are. Hold on. They're making it. Nah, man, I'm not going to do that right now. They make you feel guilty. They're not even doing anything. It's all you. But I get it. But like I said, I guess you don't bleed like I bleed. You just must not bleed like I bleed. Let me pray for you, and I want us to just worship. I want this to be a moment where you encounter Jesus. You touch his robe. You worship. You tell him everything. Even if the person next to you thinks you're crazy, that's the point the point. Will you fight through the crowd? Will you fight through that guilt? Will you fight through that shame this morning? Jesus, we're so thankful for you. We know you've been there for us in the past, but for but for some reason right now, we've forgotten that you've been faithful to us in the past, and we feel like you're going to fail us today. Jesus, we're sorry for that. We confess right now that we have failed, that we're ready to turn back, that we're ready to fight through the crowd. But Jesus, maybe someone in here right now has been constantly bleeding. I don't know what it is, but someone in here right now has something that has ripped their heart to shreds. Maybe it was something that happened while they were a child. They haven't let it go. Maybe it was a family member really overstepped boundaries. I don't know, God. But I pray right now someone would find redemption in this place someone would find grace in this place someone would fight through whether they're with their wife and they don't they've never really raised their hands before but today they want to be the man that you called them to be they're tired of bringing this guilt into their life into their marriage every single time they say anything they're wondering if they told a lie earlier whatever it is God I pray right now someone would come to their knees and tell you everything that they've ever done Jesus we love you and we praise you in your name we pray